As promised in my previous video on my new mobile workbench with a table saw and router table, I've made this new video to show you how to use and make new and improved zero clearance inserts to use with a saw, and I'll also showcase the different types of blades I use regularly, such as for example dado blades to make grooves. It's time to talk about the homemade zero clearance inserts from my last video. I made them using the same material as the bench tops, a kind of MDF that's harder and more compact and with melamine on both sides. It's 13 millimeters thick. We could also use normal MDF, plywood or almost any kind of board between 10 and 13 millimeters thick. This is the table saws factory installed insert made in aluminum. The main problem with this insert is the cut in the back that lets us use a riving knife. It makes the insert very unstable and difficult to leave it even with the rest of the work table. Here we can see that it seems as if both parts of the insert were independent and didn't belong to the same part. This doesn't happen with the new inserts as they're not cut. They're also much easier to adjust. In order to use the new inserts, I had to trim the saw's riving knife a little, but since it's quite big, it's still fully functional. Another common problem with the inserts that come with the saws is the distance between the blade and the insert itself. When cutting delicate wood or boards, these splinter on the lower side, at the exit point of the cut. I'm going to make a few cuts on this piece of chipboard with melamine to see the difference. As you can see, the cut is cleaner when using the new zero clearance inserts I made. I'll put away and will continue to use the factory installed insert when cutting wood that's not very susceptible to splintering, or for jobs that don't require a great deal of finesse. For everything else, I'll use the new and improved inserts. Now I'll show you the three types of blades I use with my table saw. All three of them are from the same blade series, the only difference between them is the number of teeth. This means they're all the same thickness, 2.4 millimeters. They all have the same shaft diameter, 30 millimeters, and also the same outer diameter, 250 millimeters. This is the maximum blade diameter that my table saw can support, so I'll take advantage of the full cutting height this saw can offer. The other advantage of using blades with the same thickness is that I can use the same zero clearance inserts and won't have to adjust the measuring tape indicator of the sliding carriage of the table saw sled. These are thin, lightweight blades which makes them perfect for these kinds of bench table saws because their shaft isn't as firm as other stationary saws, meaning we won't push its motor as hard. The first one has 24 teeth and is perfect for ripping solid wood boards, but not that great for crosscuts or cutting boards. The second one has 60 teeth and is a jack of all trades, so to speak. It can do all kinds of cuts and all kinds of materials, but it isn't as good at each specific job as the other two. The third saw blade has 80 teeth and is perfect for cross-cutting wood and cut all kinds of boards, even ones with melamine. Since it has so many teeth, it's not the best blade for rip cutting. Ideally, we should have all three blades, but if you can only buy one, the second one will be the best option. You can make almost all kinds of cuts with it. 
This is the Taro blade I use with the table saw. It's about 150 millimeters in diameter, and thanks to all its blades and spacers, it can cut grooves between 6 and 23 millimeters. The central shaft hole is 15.8 millimeters, the usual shaft diameter for this type of table saw. In order to use this kind of blade, your saw should have a shaft that's at least 30 millimeters long. Many of you have asked me about the European regulations about the use of these kinds of blades, and to be honest, it's not very clear. What the European regulations say is that dado blades can't be used with table saws that don't have an appropriate shaft to accommodate them. I think this is one of the few saws available in Europe with a shaft that's long enough to use with dado blades. The problem is, the European regulations explicitly forbid making any kinds of cuts with a table saw without the riving knife that's just behind the blade. To use these dado blades, it is indispensable to remove the riving knife. This is the problem with dado blades in Europe. They're not technically banned, but they're virtually impossible to use while complying with all the regulations. In my case, I'm taking a big risk by using it without the riving knife. I guess the worst that can happen is that if I have an accident, insurance policies won't cover it. I'm trying to come up with a way to use this dado blade and riving knife at the same time, but I doubt it will be an easy task. As you can see, I've made a zero clearance insert for use with a dado blade. Thanks to its small diameter, it's much lighter than other dado blades, and like earlier, this will allow me not to push the motor and shaft so hard. Keep in mind that when we use all the blades and spacers of the dado blade, the motor will have to bear a lot more weight compared to a simple cutting blade. These kinds of blades are typically used to make shallow grooves, so its reduced diameter won't be a problem most of the time. With this saw and dado blade, I can cut grooves up to 30 millimeters deep. I think that's more than enough. I can also use this lead for cutting grooves with the blade. Here I'm making some grooves for the mobile workbench's drawer spacers. Now I'll show you how I made the new inserts. First, I'll measure the gap for the insert and cut two pieces of MDF to size. I'll use these as a jig to cut the new inserts. I'll find the center of the piece, use a compass and mark the radius. I'll cut it with a bandsaw, but you can use a jigsaw too. I'll smooth down the piece with the sanding disc. I make sure the jig is correct by inserting it in the gap in the table saw's bench top. If it doesn't fit, we can correct it by using the sanding disc once more. I'll also measure and mark the position of two bolts that will let me adjust the insert's height. I drill the holes with a column drill. Now I'll make the cut that's needed for the riving knife. I work out its position and use my 3D router. We could also use a handheld router and jigs. It's time to cut the riving knife so that we can use this type of insert without a cut in the back. I place the bolts that allow me to adjust the insert's height and make a cut for the blade by raising the blade itself very slowly. 
All of these steps with these MDF templates let me adjust all of the tools for when I have to make the final inserts and also to spot any potential errors. I'm going to use double-sided tape to stick the other MDF jig to these pieces of use to make the inserts. I've pre-cut them, leaving them 2 millimeters bigger than the jig. I'll use a flush trim router bit. Its bearing touches the jig, making the copying process easier. You might be thinking I could have used this bit and a factory installed insert as a template, but this insert didn't fit the gap perfectly. Not only did it have slack, the cut in its back would make these milling jobs significantly more complicated. I'll put away this jig I made out of NDF so that I can make new inserts when necessary. I'll also use another bit with a bearing so that I can cut this recess. It will allow me to place the inserts more easily, besides letting me use the height adjusting bolts. This board is 13 mm thick. If you use a thinner board, about 10 mm thick, I think you can also skip this step. Now with a column drill, I'll make a hole that will allow me to remove the inserts more easily. I'm also going to chamfer the inner edges of the hole and the entire underside of the insert. I'll use the 3D router again to make grooves for the riving knife and another for the blade itself. This last groove won't be necessary if you use a thinner board. In my case, the blade touches the underside of the insert, even at its lowest position. I'll use the MDF jig again to mark the holes that will let me adjust the height of the inserts. I'll make the holes with a column drill, being careful not to make through holes. I place the screws and then put the insert in place. I adjust the insert until it's level with the rest of the bench top. Now I can make the cut for the blade on the insert, using the blade itself by raising it little by little. I've made another hole in the back of the insert to place a washer that will act as a safety lock so that the inserts won't eject due to the blade's rotating motion. Finally, I follow the same steps with the inserts I made for use with the Dado blade.
I'm not going to make the cutting one go. For safety reasons, I'll place the blades one by one. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video until the end.